but I'll give the game away since we all know labels <laughs> necessary. The artist that can connect with me in a different way besides the internet is going to be the artist that's going to flourish the most. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I can like 10 artists on the internet, but the one person that was that was in my crib, oh no, I love him. Yeah. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on Apple Music, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of currency and creative creativity artists y'all can get that money and still be creative entrepreneurs y'all are creative too we already know this and today we got somebody who lives that no labels approach is not taking the normal path second time yeah. first second time <laughs> attendee to the podcast yeah. actually super vip i appreciate it mckee <laughs> what's going on two times grammy it. winner you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> you know, i don't know how many w. artists he broke probably more than you can count on both hands at this Man. point you know, yeah. um, and he here to bless y'all with some game yet again. Appreciate it, man. To that point, I, I hate when people like don't consider executives artists in a mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because at this point, you have to know what I'm doing is is, is art. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if I had broke one artist, two artists, that could have been luck. And that's what they used to say. You know, one, two, that's luck. But yeah. you know, we we had like ten. Yeah. And so hey, man, I don't, don't don't treat me no different. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, yeah, I, I I think people do slip on that because you you know the, for the people who are really doing it in this business yeah. at a high level and the ones especially the ones who are closer to the artists, right? Yeah, and you're an exec like just watching you. You are closer to the actual situation, not yeah. just like sitting up in, in the, the back, yeah, and everything. Like yeah. you have to have some level of creativity. You know right. I mean? I mean, I work with them. You know what I mean? Like we we work on the music together. We work on the artwork, the sequencing. We work on the entire body of work together. You know, mm -hmm. I'm the behind the scene artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so it, it has to be that way. That's why I've, I've never built out a label where I signed 30 because I could have. Yeah. Where I sign thirty and wait for a five to pop, I'm I'm always in the small numbers. That's why we we you know what would be called boutique because we only deal with a small number of artists. And I do it because I have to be close to them in order for them to succeed, which is why so many have succeeded with me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, but it I, it, it, it irked me. I was like, oh, this is this is my art. It's, it's our art. <laughs> 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 it's our art. Hey. You know what I mean? So. My bad. That was an ick. Hey, I'm no, sorry. No, no, no. no I, I love it, yeah. man. Talk that talk, man. Yeah. You know, people don't want to hear the executives talk, but I think we're in a space as there's more information being put out there. You yeah. know, it's time for the executive perspective to get out there because everything's so anti the industry. But, right. But I think artists are starting to understand, or we try to help artists understand, yes, you can go against the industry and the model as a whole, but there's the industry is made of great people, right? Yeah. As well, right? So the models might might suck that people are working with them, but you might have two really cool people at a label or two really cool people at a distributor. You can have somebody who's indie and or on your own team who's a, a bad person. So um like you're obviously somebody who's been doing it right. And speaking of that same thing, you've talked at length. I've heard you at least say this two or three times that mm -hmm. the best executives aren't at the labels anymore. Yeah. Why yeah. is that? Well, because the 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 model of the music business has changed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we needed the music uh, labels. We needed them because they literally controlled radio, TV. They controlled everything. And so any person, executive artist that wanted access to the masses had to go through them. But now the executives don't have to they don't have to depend on that machine because they no longer have the the control yeah. now i can go to the dsps as a normal person through tunecore through you know what i mean I can, I can go to all these places you know the access is wide open so me as an executive i'm putting in the same amount of energy and the same amount of brain power into breaking the artist for you and i'm getting paid a hundred thousand a year and i've made you a hundred million well, now, you know, my access is the same as yours. Matter of fact, you need me. You know what I mean? You couldn't even get that hundred million without me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make my own hundred million. Mm. You know what I mean? But, and pretty much every executive has realized that, you know, and hopefully I've been a factor in showing them that, that, Hey, you, you know, you can do this without being tied to any system. You know what I mean? All you need is, um, the, the know-how, the knowledge, yep. um, the access is, is wide open. You know, all these people are on Twitter, they're on LinkedIn, so I can reach out to whoever I may need, need to reach out to. So it's not, there's nothing holding me back now. 
Right. And so, and this is, you know, I'm not just saying this. You literally have seen it. All of the executives, they're gone. They they run their own shops now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Joey Ayi has his own shop. Ray uh, Daniels has his own shop. You know, all of these people have their own shops. Tunji, even though he's tied as CEO, he has his own shop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So everybody has started their own shop so they can make sure they secure their wealth as opposed to helping, you know, the major machine secure their wealth. Got you, man. Got you. Like, that's... That's interesting to hear. It makes me think about the executives on the come up, right? So if you were here today, right, coming up, would you go into a label to then peep game and then try to get out? Or would you just build ground up and maybe find some mentors? Like, how would you approach the game for the young executives? Would would you say knowing what I know or when I started? Knowing what you know now, but, like, if you started, like, what do you think would get you to the point where you know what you know now and can move how you need to be able to move now. You get what I'm saying? If but you have but you had to start to today. So I, well let's just say if I had to start over. Yeah, if you had I, to start I wouldn't over. I wouldn't change anything. I would do what I'm doing. Um if I had if I had so to start so so to the new executives, um it, it's not it's not necessarily about going inside a label because there are courses. You know what I mean? There are books. Um and then there's just mentorship period. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? These people are are reachable. Um, I always tell people when you're trying to meet somebody that's you know, quote unquote, doing better than you, because I don't even believe in that per se. But when trying to meet somebody that I guess well, here, put it this way, when trying to meet somebody more experienced than you, yeah. the best thing you could do is bring something to the table. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and so it's not it's not difficult to meet somebody more experienced than you. It's just the fact that I have to bring something to the table for you to entertain this relationship. You know what I mean? So me as an executive where I am, if I meet somebody and they tell me, hey, I, I, I love your content. I think I can show you how to do it better. I'm a, it's going to pique my interest immediately. Like, well, how can I do it better? Mm-hmm. What, what do you know that I don't know? And can you show me? That's going to be my immediate mindset. And now we have a relationship. You know what I'm saying? So it's just coming to some, so coming, bringing something to the table. So I didn't have to go inside and give you three years of my life. I just brought something to the table and now we have a relationship. You know what I'm saying? I can spend that three years building my business mm-hmm. versus building yours. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So courses to get you the information. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, mentorship to yeah. you know skip through some of that experience and then because you know the courses can only show you it so much right 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 then connections and capital what about those two things well luckily for any and all business not just music and artists any any exposure you need can be attained on your own through content you know what i mean so if you want to build something you just have to learn how to market it through content. Um, and so that doesn't take capital. That just takes paying attention. You know what I mean? TikTok, Instagram, they're all trends. All I have to do is figure out how to fit my brand into that trend. That's going to give me the exposure. That exposure is going to teach me the lessons I need. And that exposure is going to bring the income I need. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's all possible. I mean, I started my record label at 21, I want to say, or maybe 20, with no money at all. And so when people come and they talk to me about not having any money, it's not it's not an excuse. You know what I mean? Well, it's an excuse on there, but it's not an excuse to me because I'm like, what do you need money for? Go out and do it. You know what I mean? When people say they want to be a and you don't need permission to be an A&R. Go find an artist. Yeah. That's how you become an a and You just is the first word in become is be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so if you be it, it will come. Mm-hmm. I like that. I might have to write that in a book. So if you be it, it will come. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so that, that's pretty much what it is, right? Yeah. If you want if you want to start a label, then you start. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you go out there and you make the content necessary to attract the right artists. You know what I'm saying? A big part of me being able to be in partnership with LaRussell was the content that I was putting out. I had reached out to LaRussell for months with no response. And then somehow he came across my content and DM'd me. I love your content. They got been trying to reach you, <laughs> but it, but the content reached them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. so, and so that's, that's how it goes. Like whatever you want to do, because we're in this content era, it's attainable, no cost to you. Mm. Just, just make the content, um, portraying yourself as such, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and everything you want will come to you. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's interesting you bring up content too, because I feel like maybe this last like two or three years, yeah. It's been the first time I've really seen like a lot of music executives stepping into the, stepping the content into world. It. Yeah, so do, yeah. do you feel like even just approaching content the way you do and being a part of the world, do you feel like it gives you an advantage over like other executives moving in your space? Well, I do. I know that it gives me an advantage. Um, and, and honestly, that, was, that wasn't that was the goal when I started doing content. 
Um, the goal was to get the, the knowledge out there. You know, I, I started doing content because I wanted to educate people through a course. Okay. My initial intention was to be an in-person course. You know what I mean? I had no intentions of having an online course, but I started right as the pandemic started, which turned out to be a blessing because the online course reached way more people than I could have reached in a room. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it turned out to be a blessing, but I, the content was always to educate people. You know what I mean? Um, it, it wasn't in effect to to help my business. Um, as a matter of fact, when I started doing content, NPR didn't even exist. Now that I think about it. You know what I mean? So it, it was never about helping my business. But now that I do have NPR, it helps my business tremendously because these people want to work with me. Just like a little Russell, he, he reached out to me. Even I've been on his case for a while, mm -hmm. but he reached out to me because they, they want to connect with me. And maybe it, maybe not always to do business with me, but at least connect with me and, ha and, and gain that mentorship. Yep. You know what I mean? And so I'm just very fortunate. Other execs are starting to do it, do it, and um, you know I feel like I was definitely a, a leader in that space. But I, I want them to, you know what I mean? I, I didn't do it to. I'm not the controller of Instagram. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want them to. I want them to go out and spread this knowledge because the whole point was educating people. Yeah. So the more people educating, the happier I am. You know what I mean? They, they're not the thing about doing content as a music executive is if you're not giving value in that content, you, you're not going to go anywhere. You know what I mean? And so because of that, you have to educate. Yep. That's the only way you can get value. And so my, my goal for everybody is just to be educated so they can do business so that we can gain wealth together. You know what I mean? And it's going back to the music executives, just I want to collaborate with these people. That's why I go on a Ray Daniels podcast and I invite Ray Daniels to my podcast. I want to collaborate. I want us to spread as much knowledge as possible. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like my time in, in the music business is coming to an end, um, not because, you know, the younger crowd is coming and taking it from me, which I encourage that as well. Mm -hmm. But I just want to do other things, you know what I mean? And so with that being said, it's like I'm trying to leave as much game on the table as possible mm -hmm. so the next person can be far greater than I ever was. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that's pretty much what it is. And speaking of game, want to take a quick break because J.R. McKee has put – crazy game in this course he talked about courses yeah. he did a course we collaborated and content is such a key to blowing up today but also strategy and we touch on both of those two keys in this course if you go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash grammy yes. again that's www you can't forget that part dot brandmannetwork.com slash grammy you can get this game he says right. he's putting putting it all out there he's worked yes. with um little dirk Rod Wave, wave her, her uh, just, money, just got a number one with Justine Scott. Money Long, Justine Scott, ago. French Montana. Like, the, the names are um, out there. He's certified. Eric Bellinger. Um, just, right, just, just, the, the just, so, yeah, <laughs> just so <laughs> many wheels now is about to pop. Uh, shout out to Amari <laughs> Noel. She's having a crazy uh, emergence right now on TikTok. Um, so just, just shout out to all, all the people. Uh, my boy Garen, shout out to him. Everybody I work with, man, shout out to y'all. Hey. So obviously the experience is there. The information is down there. Check that out. We'll also put the link in the description for those who are watching on YouTube. But with yeah. that being said. Well, wait, I want to give you okay. all y'all flowers, too, because y'all were a big part of this course. You know what I mean? And, and the, the knowledge that y'all added was extensive. I was like, man, I, I, I give out game and I, and I break stuff down. But I think y'all break stuff down tremendously. I you know what I mean? That, and so I, I, I was looking through everything that you guys added, and I was just very impressed, man. Very appreciate impressed. Appreciate so that, shout man. out to y'all, too. Yeah, man. We I mean, we got that same mission in terms of the value, man. Like, don't you can't give nobody something and not be value in it because now yeah. they don't trust you anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. There's always going to be something of value when we move. And, and I think this is one of our best yet because we had artists who were, to me, already doing a, a significant level of success. Mm -hmm. I actually got it and they were like yo man this changed my whole strategy for the year mm -hmm. i love it man so it, it i love it to hear that it's dope to hear that and yeah. see it but want to move on mm -hmm. we've been hearing this that that it's gone from like fifty thousand songs dropping a day to a hundred thousand right? yeah 38 million songs with zero streams zero on streams spotify and i almost didn't believe that until uh -huh. i actually came across the artist with zero monthly listeners <laughs> 
And I was like, wow. Like it because every every time I come across a, a artist, you know, they'll have, you know, fifty or a hundred. Yeah. I've never seen zero until yeah. recently. And I was like, yeah. dang, I guess they won line when they said thirty eight million. <laughs> yeah. He's so far removed. You're like, man, yeah. that's, that's really out there. Yeah, I was I was shocked. So what what's your perspective on those stats? Do you look at it as, hey, this is a lot of competition? that's being dropped every day or do, are you like man only a certain amount of these people are really taken seriously or do you not even look at other music as con- competition in terms of the attention that it takes from one to the next honestly no i don't look at it as competition um I, i'm gonna go back to the first part of the question in a second but as far as competition yeah. i don't look at it as competition because the, the beauty in music is is everybody can be number one you know I can be number one this week. The next week, somebody else can come in. I really think like Apple Music, I'll be number one for this hour. And then two hours later, you could be number one. So it's like, yeah. it's, a, it's a shared space at the top. You know what I mean? It's not it's not a space where only one person can be number one. So that's how I kind of look at it with, with my other executives that are, that are at the top of me. It's like, I'm going to help make sure you get yours. You know what I mean? Because the truth of the matter is, you can be number one for one minute, get that screenshot, and that's all you need. Hey, that's the truth. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. so for me, <laughs> with my friends, like I want to just make sure they reach that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not involved. You my boy. You, I got to help you. You got you to gotta touch that number one. So it's not a competition in, in that sense. But as far as being oversaturated, um, very much so. And, and I just feel like, man, just like kind of like I care about who the president is. But at the end of the day, I got to make a shake for me. And so that's kind of how I feel about it being oversaturated. I care about it, but I got to make a shake for me. I got to find a way. Right. You know what I mean? So that's how I move with it. That makes a lot of sense, and the way you making shape today, yeah, is the point that you said you made. I think Jacory sent me the video, and I was like, "Yeah, man, we've been talking about the same thing, having your own media company." Mm-hmm. As yeah, an artist. yeah. How do you look at an artist having their own media company? What you say? Because I know what I think. Right. Well, I mean, first of all, you have to recognize that you you need that media. You know what I mean? Like all music discovery, well, not all, I can't say all, but majority of music discovery is through content. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you have to recognize that that's the only way or the best possible way you'll be discovered and the most likely way you'll be discovered. So once you recognize that, then it's like, how do I keep up with the demand of putting out X amount of pieces of content a day? Mm. Well, that's why it's called a business or a company because now it's more than just you. Yeah, You have to put together that team that understands content and what I learned from you, that team that knows how to speak the language of TikTok, because that's the language being speaking, spoken in content right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that I need a team that understands this to help me execute that mission. But with artists, they, they still had in, in all things in their business, they still have to be the visionary and the leader in that. You know what I mean? Because even if I hire two people to help me make content, they can't make me get out of bed and turn on the camera. You know what I mean? They, they they can't make me sit back and think of the ways to deliver this message. They can help and they give me ideas and they maybe can show up with the camera when I allow them to. But at the end of the day, if I'm not the person that's the, the most gun ho about this, it's not going to get done. It's not going to be successful. So first, you have to be the number one and then you build a team around. You have to be Michael Jordan. Then you had to go find your Scotty. You had to go mm-hmm. find your Dennis and you have to build that media team. Just like when I started NPR, I knew this already. So I didn't hire a and team. I hired a content team. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I hired. I said, okay, I need to find people who understand content. So I hired that team and we signed money long. And then five months later, we were number one because we understood content. You want to move streams, you need content. And we understood that best. And, and, but now, you know, here we are two years later, everybody has followed that blueprint. And so now you have this flooding. And so now it's like, okay, they flooded what, what we were doing great. So we have to find another way to be great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that that way is too oversaturated. Yeah. And so that's that's what we're in the midst of doing with Manny Wells and with Amar, Amari Noel. We're in the midst of changing what it looks like to be great in order to succeed. Because our old method is is flooded already. Is this beyond content? Are you saying we need to do something else other than content? Well, or is it doing content in a different it's, way? It's, it's doing content in a different way. Okay. You know what I mean? But it, but it does go beyond content. Um, and, you know... I don't mind. I'll tell you the, the, what I believe, you know what I mean? Okay. Because I haven't proven it yet. And I usually only talk about stuff I've proven. Mm-hmm. But I'll give the game away since we all know it was necessary. <laughs> I believe what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find ways to create experiences. You know what I mean? Nice. You're going to have to find ways to create experiences. And then from that experience, the content will be able to break through on the internet. Mm-hmm. 
but you have to create these experiences because everybody's on the internet. But the artists that can come to my hometown or or while I'm out at their hometown, whatever the case may be, the artists that can connect with me in a different way besides the internet is going to be the artist that's going to flourish the most. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I can like ten artists on the internet, but the one person that was that was in my crib, oh no, I love him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so you have to find a way to create these experiences. And of course, you have to document those experiences and put that content online because yeah. that experience will reach that one person. But the way that, that that feeling comes across the screen will reach millions. You know what I mean? For example, Manny Wells going home to for the first time in Nigeria. Yep. You know what I mean? The the him showing the experience of connecting with his father after 14 years, although you're not him and you're not his father, you feel it. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Connected with him in a different way. It, exactly. I, I know Manny for a while. When yeah. I saw that video. That's just different. It's just different. And so, and so how do I create those experiences Mm -hmm. more often to be able to connect way larger on the internet? You know what I mean? And so that's, that's what we're in the process of of figuring out for Manny and for Amari. And that's how we're going to break them and take them to the top. It's great, man. Because like hearing you talk is like, there's always things that we're on the same page with. I'll be waiting for something that we can argue about, <laughs> but I haven't, seen it. I haven't seen it yet. But like, cause we even say the way fans see you treating other fans, mm-hmm. they almost appreciate it as if it was them. Right. Yeah. Yes. So yes. like showing, like you said, the, these real world experiences of I did this with a fan or like this happened in this private event that we had with the fans. Like we had right. an artist who's doing this real dope private event and she was able, able to sell out, with 75 tickets for hundred dollars. That's right? dope. On That's a 75 dope. cat room, right? And she's already gearing up to do another one. Yeah. Like nothing, right? And the way that's gonna connect and have to be shown back on exactly. it's, it's it's all the same thing. And I would think that leads to something, I guess, what's required on on that side, right? In terms of doing an event well, in your opinion. Um I mean Again, this, this process, I don't want to call it new to me, but I, I'm I'm trial and error in this process. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm still learning. I haven't yeah, I, yeah. I don't have this master yet. Um, but but I think at the end of the day, um, you, you it has to be um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't want to say small. It has to be limited. It has to be. Limit, yep. It has to be. Uh, it's a. It's a word I'm looking personal, for. Personal. Well, it has to be personal. It has to be intimate for sure. It's but like, um. What's the word when like the quantity is small? Uh, I can't think of the word. I just lost on me. Mm. Um, but anyway, yeah. let's just let's just stick with small and intimate. It has it has to be that because it has to be personal. Yep. You know what I mean? So so that's number one. It's like I feel like it has to be personal. Like every person there has to feel a much deeper connection with you than they would if they were at a concert with three thousand people. Yep. You know what I mean? Because again, you looking for that feeling to come across on camera. Cause it's still about content at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that that feeling has to be different than the feeling of three thousand people. You know what I mean? So I I think that's that's the first part. It's just those intimate experiences. Um and then after that, it's just like it's just you you gotta make a connection with those people that are there. Because those are going to be, you know, kind of like your bullhorns. Mm-hmm. Like that, every, every, out of those 75 people, every single one, I promise you, they're going to talk to 10, 20 people about you. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know what I mean? And so that's how your, your fan base spreads. You know what I mean? So you just got to make make sure they, they feel like this experience was amazing and they got to connect with the artist. Because I, I think what's going to end up happening is instead of having, you know, two or three just super dominant superstars, everybody's going to have their own space. You know what I mean? So as a as a young fan, as a twelve year or let's go, or as a fifteen year old, I'm going to have two or three artists that I really love that most people would have never heard of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so and so that's going to be the way that um, consumers experience music. In my opinion, moving forward, they're going to have their their people that they love that everybody else isn't up on, and that's fine because I've been to this person where there's only us and fifty people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like this is my guy, this is my girl. You know what I'm saying? So. That's how fans are gonna feel about their people, um, about their uh, their artists. So I think that's sort of more or less where we're headed to, where everybody will be able to have their own thing, versus all of us loving Beyonce. Yeah, and and by the way, I'm not saying we'll love Beyonce forever, but just, <laughs> the point I'm making is it's going to be you have your people versus everybody loving one person. Yeah, it ain't going to be that many new Beyonce. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, the space has been created because if you look at technology, how. Right, first it allowed us to connect with people in other places. Then it got to a point where 
you know, we got detached and then mm-hmm. you had working from home. So you have these people that don't have a way to connect and create community in the same way. It was just natural without us thinking about it growing up. Right? Yeah. So you have generations that are looking for people to connect to. And a lot of them are doing it through their artists and yeah. when you add these events and create community around yourself. Like that, that's why I was talking about. This is part of what we were arguing about between <laughs> West versus Will Russell. Oh, you're not gonna let it go. I'm not gonna let it well, go. I was trolling you, but I meant to tell you hey, that too. Hey, man. It doesn't matter. Man. It, was, it, was, it was great for the content. So you gotta you gotta hold you gotta hold the position on going forward. Yeah, you gotta stand on it. <laughs> they say you gotta stand on it. Hey, but but so there's a difference between having a very strong fan base. You can have a very 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 strong fan base and be successful as an artist versus having a community, right? Mm-hmm. And the community are also going to be fans, but they're not a community. The community requires the fans to actually connect and interact with each yeah. other, have a certain set of values. Right? right. All Drake fans don't necessarily have the same values. Like, you know what I mean? But right. I get you. Russell, you can probably identify what they look like. J. Cole has a bit of probably a community of a going community. for you, right? You kind of know like who his well, fan base is. You can look yeah. at him, he a J. Cole fan. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? You know, you yeah. go to Dream Little Fest and it's like they all kind of look like they're in the same There's category. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So no, that's what they call J. Cole backpack rapper. So they, yeah, I get it. New age backpack yeah. rapper for sure. Yeah. So like that's what the, what you get the opportunity to do at these private type of events. Or yeah. I say private, you build you know, a community. Whatever yeah. those type of events are. And you can yeah. still sell to people at these events, right? Yeah, so it's, it's a great. And because cycle. it's a smaller community um, that that are accustomed to supporting you, they'll support you with much larger numbers. Mm-hmm. So I'm not mm-hmm. selling these shows for twenty dollars tickets. Nope. You know what I'm saying? I'm selling, like you said, for a hundred dollars. I'm mm-hmm. selling them for much more because this is a small community that that you know appreciates me much more than they appreciate somebody that they just seen online. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it, you're actually able to make more revenue doing it this way, keeping it, keeping it small, keeping it limited. Yeah. yeah, well, I think yeah. it's interesting too. Is like fans have kind of been asking for that for years, right? Like you yeah. always see fans say, "Like, man, like I'm trying to gatekeep you, right? I'm trying to I'm trying yeah. to keep you just to me." And it feels like now they've come to the realization, like, "Oh, there's a price for that. Right? Yeah, that price isn't going to be cheap." But to your yeah. point, I would much rather pay a hundred dollars to be able to dap up my favorite artist, than right? Three hundred just to see Drake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, from, from exactly, yeah. exactly. So yeah, I mean, I think it's. The times we are moving into are, are beautiful. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be an amazing time, an amazing atmosphere, and artists are gonna be able to eat. You know, yeah. finally, you know what I mean. Like every every artist that is able to create a, a community is going to be able to do well. Yeah. What is your like? What is your your artist monetization model look like right mm-hmm. now? Like, what are kind of like the first couple of things you start building towards with the artists in terms of being able to make revenue back? Well, you, you always got to start with that that limited. You know what I mean? You always have to start there because if you don't have, you know, a strong fan base in your building and you get your, your first 100 fans in your community, like you get your first 100 people on Discord. Um, and obviously you got to be active with it because you can have 100 people and only 30 show up. Mm-hmm. But that, that comes because you aren't active. You know what I mean? So if you're active inside that 100-person community and you have majority of them showing up, I can sell you 10 things. Yeah. I can say, hey, man, you know, there's only 10 of these. You know what I'm saying? I'm selling them for $20. And you just condition them to understand, like, I need y'all support. And they, they'll be very happy because they want to be like, I was here first. Yeah. Like, this was her first drop. You know what I'm saying? Like, And so it's just about it's just about keeping it limited and keeping it important to you because you can't just put your, your logo on a shirt and call it merch. You know what I mean? Like, you got to show them, like, this means something to me because that's that's the only way to mean something to them. You know what I mean? So just thinking, like, you know, what what really matters to me? What 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 do I identify with that I, that I can make, you know, a, a product? You know what I mean? And then let me, let me this month, I'm going to sell 10. Next month, I may sell 20. Mm. Community grows. Okay, now I, now I sell 100 of them. Um, and this could be literally how you pay your bills. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, because I'm on selling a limited number, I don't have to sell this T-shirt for what people are used to buying. They're used to paying twenty, but I can sell it for a lot more because they know like this. This is this is super important. I'm not just selling you a T-shirt. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yep. the importance and the values that you put on the product is going to grow the price of it. You know what I mean? So you're able to you're able to make real money, but you have to start very small. Yeah, I saw that with um, this artist named Smino. He had put mm-hmm. a merch drop out. And there were a lot of people in the comments like, man, you charging like 150 for a hoodie. And I go yeah. to the website 
and the hoodie sold out. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm it's like, yeah. Man, so. You gotta, you gotta, just gotta start small, man. But keep keeping it limited is, is the key. And I still haven't thought of the word I'm looking for, but keeping it limited is the key. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Now, speaking of La Russell, speaking of like community scarcity, branding. I think scarcity, scarcity is the word I was looking that's for. Probably word. Okay. Yeah, scarcity. Yeah. So speaking of all those things, though, you mentioned doing a drop with him last year, mm -hmm. right? Um, can you yeah, break October. that down? The approach, the, the lessons you learned, and what and, the, and things got applied. <sighs> man, what did I learn? I learned a lot, man. I learned a lot. I, I mean, what what happened was he hadn't put out like a, a full body of work. Like he had dropped mad music, like LaRussell. Well, he hadn't put out a studio project of work. Like yeah. he was doing like, you know, recording outside live, live shows. Like he would, everything, I swear to God, every time this man put put his lips to a mic, he records it and he sells it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it don't matter what it is. You know what I mean? Everything's for sale. Every, everything's for sale, right? And that's great. You know what I mean? But he, up until that point of his explosion, he hadn't put out like a studio body of work. Mm. You know what I mean? And so at the time... I knew of a platform called Even. So Even is was a brand new platform that hadn't even launched yet. You know what I mean? Um, we ended up launching the platform with LaRussell as the first drop. But I knew they had built this platform to sell music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they knew that direct-to-consumer was about to come back. Yeah. So they had built this platform to sell music. Um, and, and, of course, sell music and access, right, to, to the artist. And so I told LaRussell, I said, yo, I know some people. I think you should talk to them. You know what I mean? So I connected them. And... Um, he was selling, he was selling, what do you call, uh, shares of his music yeah. already. Like he was already, like he was already about that life just to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. He's already about that life. So all, all I did was connect him with a platform to help him continue to do what he was already doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So his community was well primed. It ain't like this is, oh, I'm all of a sudden out of nowhere going to sell y'all something. They had been purchasing from him. Yeah. So he had already built a strong fan base that was used to supporting him in that way. You know what I mean? But this was just his first studio body of work. Um, and long story short, we, we connected with Eve and we put it together. Um, and we dropped, we dropped the project on Eve and, a week, I want to say a week before it dropped on DSPs, before it streamed. You know what I mean? And so over that week span, I want to say the first day he sold a thousand copies by like the second day he was at 2,500 copies and in total ended up selling 4,000 copies. Um, but he had already come up with this structure called, you know, pay what you want. Yep. Um, and so basically what that means is you can give me $10, you can give me $100, you can give me $2,500, whatever you feel like this art is worth to you. That's what I'll accept. You know what I mean? Pay me what you want for this art. Um, and man, it's freaking brilliant. You know what I mean? Because La Russell's so special because it's not just about music. He stands on values. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when I tell artists, when you, when you say something, everybody says they're independent and they love independent. They want to be independent. But saying it and actually doing it in practice is two different things. And so everything he had been doing up to that point was the practice of selling his art versus streaming. You know what I mean? And so that ended up paying off big time because he had people pay him up to $2,500 for that album. He ended up making like 150000 in sales in the first week off that album. You know, the album, streaming-wise, didn't really do anything spectacular. He was on the charts and stuff like that because he had become a name at that point. But nothing comparable to the one week of sales he did with that project. And he turned around and sold another one like three weeks later, that that did like twenty thousand the first week or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, it, I mean that dude is phenomenal, man. That's an important thing yeah. though, because like we talk about it all the time, looking at all these different metrics that artists go by, and you just said like it didn't do crazy streaming. I think currently his monthly listens are somewhere in like three hundred thousand, three, yeah, or three four hundred thousand. Yeah. His name and the marketing behemoth he is. Yeah, you know I like it. Larissa, you are a marketing hey. behemoth. I like that. I like that. Hey, he, I yeah. mean, he and he's someone who truly has a media company. Yeah, right? exactly. And how, how he's moving, he's able to do numbers and connect with people and make that amount of money. Yeah. Who's making that much, much money from streaming? Not a lot of artists. Not a lot of artists. Not, a, a not, not 150 a week. Especially not indie. Not that, yeah. All right, especially indie. Yeah. You, the ones who are doing those numbers still got to bust it down to yeah. somebody else so it takes i don't know how many it's probably artists with 100 million streams that are, are barely making that kind of money 
No, nah, they, they definitely not, man. They definitely not. But I mean, I think that he's opening the door for all artists to be able to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's a big catalyst in a direct to consumer coming back. Yeah. Um, you know, cause that's, that's what CDs were. Right. You know what I mean? Um, $10 now, of course, even back then, unless you were independent, you weren't getting the bulk of that. Um, but now it's space for everybody to be independent. And so even if you go out and sell your album for $10, bro, you're making way more than you'll make on streaming by yeah, far. That's true. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so even if just $10 a album sale, you're making way more. And that's the crazy part about it. You said a lot of a lot of things, right? Because you talked about his audience was prime for it. Yeah. So we built a relationship that we can exchange in this way. You're used yeah. to paying me money for things. Maybe yeah. not a certain amount, but at least you're used to paying me $5 at a time. You right. know that I need to be supported and all the messaging that requires someone to be used to selling from uh, buying from you, you already had to establish. So his, 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 his relationship was there, but then his message, you go back to them values, they're very yeah. strong, very clear, and he repeats them yeah. over and over. And he stands and on, he again. practices them. Mm-hmm. I guess when they say stand on, it's like he, he, he did it in practical ways. He's not just saying it. He, you mm-hmm. see him practically doing it. He's practicing what he's preaching. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's, that's why, you know, he, he gets resonated with so well. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, but we shifted from this is the only way you can get this music, right? The CDs, albums, and all that stuff. To streaming, music is free. But now, it's not the only way you can get this music, but people want to yeah. access the music through things where we pay you money. Yeah. Uh, the music is free, but we want to. But now we're doing it by choice, which means you definitely have to give us a reason to do it. Right. There you go. There you go. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. It's an interesting landscape, man, but I think that's going to be, I always say, there's these artists that feel like, I wish it was like, let's just say the 90s or whatever, or they didn't have to create all this content, da 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 But Man. it's like, well, if you look at the 2000s, you look at the 90s, every single era, there is an a artist that has a gripe with the way it's, the way it's done. That era, right? Yeah. And every era lends towards artists who might be naturally more strong in a certain skill set. You might be crazy writing game or back in the day, the ones who could sing, sing, sing. Yeah. Right. Advantage versus the ones who are now like auto tune and they can't sing. Right. Yeah. So there's every era has its own advantages. It Music isn't supposed to win in one specific way or another. That's just the era. That doesn't yeah. have anything to do anything. Yeah. It's like I said, you got, you got to make it shake. You got, you yeah. got to do you got to do what you have to do. You know what I mean? If, if this is what you want, then this is what you have to do. You know? Period. And so that's just, that just is what it is, man. Yeah. And so, but I, I think exactly like no matter what era you were in, if you're the type of person who's complaining about content, you would have been complaining about touring. You would have been complaining about doing radio shows. Yeah, you so would have found like something that. to complain about. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's just part of the mentality. That's why you have to change your mindset if you want to win. Yeah. Like, and it's so funny when you go through enough history, you always see, a lot of these elements at work, right? I was listening to the audio book of Will Smith's book, maybe mm-hmm. back in like earlier last year or something. And him and Jazz Jeff were doing this thing where there was a phone line mm-hmm. where people would call in and they were paying something like a dollar a minute or, or, yeah. or something. And maybe it was more expensive after that, but it, he was making like $10,000 a day because people called to hear their voicemail. So, like, you know, Will wasn't actually on the line, but they would have yeah. like a message that they would leave for their fans and were going wow. on our tour. And hey, this is an update of how we're, and you're just giving them this thing to tap into. Yeah. All the stuff existed. I, I, I like that. Um, there's actually some a way you can do that now. Really? So there's there's a company called Logcast, L O G Cast, Logcast, and they have a partnership with Spotify. Mm. And so basically, you can set up a subscription, okay. you know what I mean? Um, so if they were paying a dollar per message, you know, you can charge a, a dollar subscription, however you want to do it. You can charge whatever you want, but it's subscription based, right? And what you can do is you can leave those voice notes and it'll upload to Spotify immediately. Mm. You know what I mean? And so, you know, to upload a song to Spotify takes two, three days, yeah. but the voice notes upload immediately. Mm. And so the same way they can come to your Spotify page and see your music, they can also come to your Spotify page and see the voice notes. And you can charge whatever you want. You can make it free if you want. But you can charge whatever you want. So it's, you can basically run that same play through Logcast and Spotify. So, yeah. but but the way you just explained it gave me a great idea of how I can have my artists. And because I, I see the tool, I just didn't know the best way to implement it. Yeah. And that's a really good way. Yeah. That's crazy. That one point you just made, because all these tools out there. Yeah. But how do you use the tools? And yeah. I, 
like a lot of the artists on the come up, the the indie artists, I feel like they get inundated with all these new right, tools. Right, all these different and things. And you feel like, I got to use this one, I got to use this one. Don't fall for all of their marketing, man. <laughs> like, find the ones that you can figure out a way that makes sense for yeah. you. And then leave it on the table if it don't make sense at the moment. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, you um touched on, actually, while we're in, on the, in the space of, like, content and community and, and um, building that team and all that stuff, let's talk about money. Mm-hmm. Ja'Cory, can you play this clip? I got a, a, a great clip from Wiz Khalifa that I would love to hear your commentary on because I know you know about some money. <laughs> I think I've seen this clip too. A lot of people don't know there's a lot of private companies and a lot of investors who will invest way more in a project than a record label. Right. I'm talking about way more. And if you can lock yourself into one of those deals, you're going to get some cheese. And you're Wait, gonna, can you school us a little bit on that? I just said it. Private investors, way more. They're buying staff, radio, they're promoting it, and you get millions of dollars up front. But is that exclusive to someone like you who already has a track? No. If it's worth money, it's going to sell. You can lock in a deal and you can find a company that is not a major record label that will invest money and you'll get right. And it's crazy because they just invest. So you run everything. I'm asking for the average artist that's trying to not oh, go I don't the major know the label average artist. route, get funding. Is that something that they can access? Please. Anybody can access it because these private companies are investing in what's making money. So if it's valuable, if you can go on tour, if you can sell merch, if you can sell records, if you have streaming, if you're monetized, if you have a video that's doing certain millions of views and it's guaranteed to make a certain amount of money, they're going to invest a certain amount of money to grow the project. Whatever this project is, it could be for an amount of time or it could be for the single project. Somebody can be in their basement and somebody could be like, yo, I see the potential in your growing. Here's $220 million. $220 million, you yeah. said? Yeah, we're giving a little game. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, now I know that I know that two twenty was like a big number, and he threw that out there like basement getting two twenty like that might not be fully realistic on that. Yeah, point, but the gist of what he's saying is absolutely real. But I would love to know like you because I know you have experience in these spaces. Yeah. So, I mean that was, that was very exaggerated. You know what I mean? Very yeah. exaggerated. But at the core of it, there's so much money flooding into music. You know what I mean? People are treating catalogs and, and music the same as real estate, meaning I can buy this asset and it'll appreciate. And it's going to appreciate because most of the world isn't streaming yet. And so once all of Africa, all of once all of these different continents have full access to streaming, what's going to happen? That revenue is going to go up because they're going to be listening to that catalog. Mm. You know what I mean? That catalog music. When you look at Apple Music charts, 75 percent of it is three years older. You know what I mean? There's only about 25% of new music on the charts. And so people understand if I buy this catalog today, come three, five years from now, it's going to be double the value. It's going to appreciate. So some ways of getting in is buying in now before they put the music out. You know what I mean? Or, you know, buying like, you know, um, single songs. There are, there are businesses out here that are buying singles. They'll find a song and say, hey, man, I'll give you 50000 for that song. You know what I mean? They're, they're doing it as, in as many creative ways as possible. But the point of the matter is, I know I can buy this asset and I know this asset will appreciate. So with that being said, there's a lot of money flooding into music. Now, it's all about connections. You know what I mean? Because it, you don't, if you don't know these people, how can, how can you, you know what I mean? Like Wiz Khalifa made it sound very much like they're just, you know, one phone call away and they're not. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it's definitely all about connections. But they, they are looking for you. But you still got to have somebody that knows somebody that to be able to connect those dots for you. Um, I think I think the the general thought process for an artist should be if I make enough noise, everybody will find me. The major label, the independent, the distribution company, the investor, they'll all find you. That's you know what I mean? And so that that's just what it comes down to. They exist. There are private investors out there that exist. It's, it's their just job about to find you. Yeah it's, yeah, it's just about making enough noise for those people to find you. You know what I mean? Because I already explained before, like, you want them to come to you versus you going to them. Because when they come to you, you have the leverage. You know what I mean? And, and so I just think as artists, make enough noise and everybody will be at your door. Distribution, indie label, major label, private money, they, they'll all come. But he's correct. It exists. You can get 
a much better term dealing with private money than you can a major label. Yeah. 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 I know like, one thing we've been starting to see a lot of too is like the, the micro investing communities, right? So mm-hmm. like, not, not necessarily coming and giving artists like these crazy checks like Wiz was saying, but like they yeah. might throw you 10K, 50K, you know, right. something like that. Right. No, they'll, they'll definitely throw you money. I don't know why Wiz said 220. That, I don't know why he <laughs> said that. You know what I mean? Like that's, I don't know why he said that. Also, nah. Sean, I think that's, Business investment money, not music. Investment. Like you know, he got all but the other he, companies. Yeah, you know? even the business, you know, um, it have it would have to be doing extremely well. You know, Todd Moskowitz yeah. was what two fifty. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had two of the biggest artists on the planet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So even from a business perspective, that business would have to be doing extremely yeah. well. Yeah. And so you know, that was a high number. <laughs> like I think he was high, and he threw out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't. Um, but the money exists and it's out there. But you know, make enough noise in every single you know, opportunity will kind of be at your doorstep and then it's up to you to pick which one makes the most sense for you. And, you know, if you are entrepreneurial enough and have enough know-how, the private money is a thousand percent the way to go. Because like you said, you're still in control at that point. Mm-hmm. The money is just an investor. They're not, they don't, they can't tell you much about the music business. Yeah. But then also at the same time, that's where like an independent label like mine will come in because if you don't have the knowledge, you need smart money. And so an uh, independent distribution company is usually the smartest money because they're not going to take as much from you. They have the same financial backing and they have the expertise. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if you have everything you need, just get the money. If you have everything you, if you have, well, if you don't have everything you need and you need a little help, but you don't want to give up everything, then you take the smart money. Or if you like, yo, I want a big upfront check, take the major deal. Cause that's gonna be your, your best bet of getting that up, upfront check and some know how, you know what I mean. But if you're entrepreneurial, you know you feel like I'll wait on the back end and get my money. Independent distribution is the way to go because you're gonna make a ton more money on the back end. When you take that big check, you're never seeing the check. Like there are artists like Rick Ross will tell you, I, I, I never saw a check. Yeah. You know what I mean. And so that's the that's the cost of taking that big upfront money. Yeah. But you know, I've, I'm I'm only 37, but I, I've lived long enough to know I don't care what amount you get, it ain't gonna last. It's gonna go away eventually, unless yeah. you invest in smartly in something else. I done went broke three times, I think. Yeah. You know what I mean? And every time I thought I was balling. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Every time I, I'm, I'm that guy broke. <laughs> I did this happened to me like three times, so I, I understand. Like I don't care how big the check is, bro. Like you can blow that money for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I just have learned those lessons. But I I, I, I like what we said because it, it did put the message out there. It just put it out there a little high. Yeah, a little yeah. high. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I um, we have an artist that. Um, like he'll work with us here, here and there, like because we, we knew him since he was like at zero, basically, right? Yeah. And he did something recently where he had a song moving, distro deals, got offers, you know, all that stuff. But he was like, nah, because he already did a singles deal and didn't really like, like the way that felt. Yeah, like the right? way it felt. Yeah. And I understand. He had been building his business credit though. Mm-hmm. All along, you sound like boom man. That's the hey. boom man strategy. I just came across. I didn't know that he was doing the business credit yeah. thing. I literally yeah. just came across that. Yeah, I was like, is this the same boom man? Yeah. But um, yeah. but yeah, he so he got like ten k from the business credit, mm-hmm. and versus like fifteen or whatever the uh, distros are offering. Right, recouped in ninety days, and he right. you know keep moving. You know what I right. mean? So like, it's definitely even if it's not two twenty or stuff like that. Right. Small moments of time where you can have access to something if you are someone who could build a business credit on that level, which is a whole nother game. You got to do that before you need the money. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you much about, about business credit to be honest with you. Um, like I said, that's, if you want to know that game, <laughs> you flip right over to my guy, boom, man. He teach it thoroughly. Sound you know like what I mean? Talk to him, man. Yeah. Bring he him teach, he teach it thoroughly, but yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you much about it. I mean, I am very much of the mindset of spending other people's money. You know what I mean? Again, I've went broke many a times. Yeah. So I, so I've gone broke because I'm the type of person that's willing to gamble it all. Mm. Like if I believe in some, I'll spend it all. Like, I don't care. Like, bro, it's going to come back. You know what I mean? That's, that's <laughs> always my mindset. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what I learned was it doesn't have to be my money. I'm spending, mm. you know what I mean? And so when I started NPR, I got investors. You know what I mean? Because 
I'm starting something from scratch. So I don't, if I own a hundred percent of it, it never go nowhere. That means I lost all of that money. Yeah. But if I own 50% of it and go somewhere, I just spend no money. And now I got this 50% income coming in every month. You know what I mean? That's, that's just the way I, I look at, at business. now. I was like, I would much rather split whatever I got to split in order for me not to spend my money. You know what I mean? That's, that's how I go into every business. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I think as a, as an artist, again, goes back to the same principle, get hot and the money will show up at your doorstep and make a good deal, make a good deal. So they spend their money. But I think the best money is going to be smart money. That's just like, if you start a tech company, they won't take everybody money. They only want the smart money. They only want the smart money. You know what I mean? And so, and as an artist, I would always say take the smart money. Um, but if you are smart in your own right and you really feel like you got it, then just take the money. You, you, I don't, I don't think, you know, there's no right or wrong way, but my advice is always smart money. You know what I mean? But if you feel like you got it, bro, just take the money. Just take the private investor. Yeah, like I said, even a little bit of smart money can go a long way because we've seen crazy stories from like $4,000, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 10000 That's crazy. Less than that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think our best, one of our best campaigns ever, we only spent like three k you know what I'm saying? That's just, that's In that just, case, we were the smart money. We were the smart money. But I feel yeah. like artists always kind of undervalue that, right? They, they see these big numbers being thrown out. But I know lots of indie labels who are like, man, we can just get 15k, I know how to make this go crazy mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. If I can just get 5k for this single, I know how to make, make shit go crazy, crazy wow. with that, you know? But that, that's such a r- great point, though, because like I hadn't really realized it never clicked because I had that tech background. That was the mm-hmm. only way I looked at investors and things like that at the beginning. Like if I'm in a place of need, I'm talking about if I'm early on trying to build something up. It's like, yeah, I could go get a little bit of money here if I need or like go to maybe some family members or whatever, maybe to get yeah. but like we're really talking about entering the game. It's like, yeah, the people who can also tell me how to build this tech platform out, have all the experiences right. of what type of team needs to be built, da, 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 like that whole thing. It's Cause I guess part of it makes it easy in tech because there's just so many complicated aspects to it. Yeah. But that same thing really does apply to music if you really think about it. Cause I feel, I be feeling like music is more complicated than, than a lot of industries. Like I, I was confused when I start, first started like moving in music. I'm like, why is it so much in the way just to get to the first level of money, you know, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and you can have, you can be missing money cause it's not fouled over here and there. Like so smart money is, and yeah. smart friends, mentorship, whatever. Like you can't do music without it as far as I'm concerned. Music yeah. is tough because the, the, the product doesn't automatically make income. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like any other business that you're selling a product, you're selling the product for a profit. Mm-hmm. You're not selling it for less than you pay for it. Right. You know what I mean? Music is a business where you're selling the art, for much less than it costs you to make it. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's what makes it tough because you 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 kind of just, you never know if this is going to pay off or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can put a hundred million, you know, whatever you want to put into it. And it mean nothing because you never make any money. You know what I mean? Um, so it, it's, it's a tough business. Um, if I, but I, if I like narrow it down to like its easiest form, I think the best storytellers are the ones who win. You know what I mean? And th- that's what that's what we do. Like we tell stories. So like our first conversation with our artists is always we want to know your story mm-hmm. because our job is to take that story and put it into the content. Uh, and that's the music and the visual content. And we can get that story out there to people. They'll buy in. And so that's that's really the, at the root of what we do is we we're storytellers. Right. You know what I mean? And so that's that media, th- man. Yeah. Media. Yes. Y'all don't need to be looking at just Spotify and what's dropping there. Y'all need to be looking at noisy, you know <laughs> what I mean? Vice. Man. How do they keep people watching, dropping these documentaries and, and telling these stories? Right. Um, before I ask you this next question, just a quick reminder, everybody, go to brandmannetwork.com, www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy to cop this course because <laughs> Jay Har has, has put it all out there. I've never seen someone who's been able to, who's been a part of breaking an artist on this level, we're talking about zero to Grammy, actually offer up this information detail to detail. You know what I'm saying? Like it it is there and it's going to give you a clear perspective of what it really takes. And this is my favorite part about it, actually. Like clarity, clarity is the biggest value to me in a lot of cases, because once you know some things or you're aware of all this different information, there's this 
like steel curtain in the music industry. Everybody's trying to be so secretive, but what a lot of people don't realize some of this secrecy is is because it allows us to seem bigger and more special than we are. We actually aren't any doing anything all yeah. that special, right? Yeah. So if you see Jr. say, "Is this this this?" and you know for a fact he got to this this goalpost, it's like, wait, no, he really just did this. Yes, but it was hard work. <laughs> Right, yeah, it's not no, it's not, that part is not missed, right? It's like, no, I had to grind, you'll see how fast he had to move and things like that. But, like, the clarity just knowing that this shit ain't magic is the biggest value you can get, yeah, definitely. Man, take the course, study the course. That's yes. that's don't take the course, study the course. Facts, facts yeah. again. That's www, you have to put in www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Y'all should know how to spell Grammy, y'all are in this <laughs> industry. Now, that being said. TikTok, mm. the game has changed, right? Yes, we've talked a lot about the game changing, just from 2020 up until last year. But we haven't even put any conversation out there about TikTok this year. And you were talking about it um, before we we shot this pod. So, what's your perspective of the changes on TikTok and how that's impacting everything? Well, I mean, TikTok as a uh, you know a social media platform continues to grow, so it's, mm-hmm. it's it's not it's not the aspect of you know people are are leaving. That's that's not what's happening. What's happening is it's a business, and so in order to attract business, they were giving away eyeballs, meaning like their algorithm was wide open, meaning pretty much everybody had the opportunity to go viral and did. You know what I mean? If anybody was posting on TikTok consistently, I, I promise you they have two, three videos with millions of views. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because TikTok wanted to make sure that they stayed on this platform that, or they came to this platform. Like people were saying, yo, I went viral on TikTok. That means other people will come like, oh, he, let me go get go viral. Everybody want to go viral. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's what was happening for the first two or three years. But now that they are the largest, you know what I mean? I no longer have to do that. Like now I can start bringing in heavy revenue. Meaning I can start charging you for those eyeballs. So if you still want to do those million views, here's the price. You know what I mean? Run run these ads. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that's that's how they become, you know, a billion is nine, 11 figure businesses. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? hundred billion dollar businesses because they can create that sort of revenue. You know what I mean? So anywho, point being, now that they're in this space where it's like, okay, everybody's here. Now we can make our money. You know what I mean? Now, TikTok, you can still go viral on TikTok. You know, I, I do it not as frequently, but probably like every other week I have a million view video. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you can still go viral on this. I'm not saying you can't, but it's 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 way, way down. Yeah. Way, 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 way down, right? All right. Well, the great news is this is a war. So you have Instagram, you have YouTube, you have Facebook. They are at war yeah. for those eyeballs. And because they understand TikTok's algorithm has tightened, guess what they did? They loosened theirs. Because here's our opportunity to get those eyeballs back. That's right. You know what I mean? And so now the way I used to go viral on TikTok, I can go viral on Instagram. I can go viral on YouTube shorts. You know what I mean? I go viral on Facebook. Man, Facebook is a sleeping giant. I had yeah. no idea how much power was in Facebook. But it is our biggest platform. You know what I mean? Facebook too was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday, last week too. Like, yeah. We've been hearing a lot. Like, yeah. right? Facebook <laughs> Reels is our biggest platform. I'm talking about numbers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Numbers. So, so yeah. So that's that's pretty much what it boils down to. Like, but I always tell people if you're doing this every day, you'll see the shifts. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'll you'll know you'll know the shifts and you you know what's going on. Um, and and I think because we do it every day at such a high level, that's what makes us the smart money. Because you know that we know. Yep. You know what I mean? Because we do it all day every day. Um, but yeah, I mean, TikTok, you know, I don't, I don't know the, the future for them as far as this whole ban, but I will say, I, I, I pray that they don't get banned. Yeah. Um, because if the competition goes away, then here at Instagram, I don't know, no, I no longer need to give you these eyeballs. Mm. You got to come over here, partner. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get my money back up yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? and yeah. stop giving away these eyeballs. And that's what I don't want. Right. You know what I mean? Because those eyeballs are the freedom to create businesses. You know what I mean? So that's how we create artists because of those eyeballs. And so if TikTok goes away, that lessens the competition. That means that's going to that's going to tighten up their algorithms because now, you know, I don't have that. I don't have that um, that person detracting eyeballs from me so I can I can charge you again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I I really, really hope that TikTok doesn't go away. What you're saying lose to me. 
alludes to the point that I've really been keying in on over the last four months where the model in today's social media, people who have to rely heavily on the media side of things Mm -hmm. is have your base and then cap on the opportunities, right? Have your base, take advantage of the moments in time. So TikTok's moving over here. And before it was like, oh yeah, I'm a TikTok star. I'm a YouTube star. I'm an Instagram. And you just only look at it like that. Now it's like, I'm a YouTuber. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Twitcher right now. Who's giving the advantage right now? Yeah. I'm going to take advantage because the the landscape might change, but you just need that base where people can always go back to. You need their, you need their data, bro. You need need their their email and and you need their phone number. You know what I mean? That's so no matter what, you know, if TikTok go away and this new thing pop up, what's they got to limit eight now? This new thing pop up, you know what I mean? You said limit eight? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a new platform. Yeah, it's, it's I don't want to call it blowing up, but it's it's doing its thing. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, But new thing pop up, it doesn't matter. I, I have direct access to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's that's what's very, very necessary is the phone number and the email. Um, And so what you have to do, um, free game. You have to start giving your fans incentive to join those lists. Of course. You know what I mean? Now, this isn't new game. This is what's been going on for, you know, decades. You're supposed to have been had a list. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but I feel like people were so dependent on social media. Instagram became so big. TikTok became so big. They forgot. Yeah. So here's the reminder. Yeah. You need lists. You need a community. You know what I mean? Um, La Russell is brilliant as he is. He has his list broken down into different things. These people play instruments. Mm -hmm. These people have yards I can use at those shows. Like he literally has his list broken down into like these segments of whatever he may need. You know what I mean? And he gets it by simply asking, Mm -hmm. hey man, if you play the violin, fill out this form. Anywhere in the world, play the violin, put fill out this form, put your city in. And now he has a database. No matter what city that man go, he got somebody to play that violin. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, like, I yeah, can't say enough about him. He's brilliant, right? Yeah. But this is this is a blueprint that all artists should follow. You know what I mean? And, and I think a lot of times artists, their ego get in the way of, of just asking. You know what I mean? La Russell, when he wanted to sell that album, he didn't, you know, go do this, do that. He he put the camera up. Hey, say, hey guys, I'm selling my album. You know what I mean? And he sold 4,000. Mm-hmm. And so it was, I think that you have to, as an artist, get, get rid of the ego or, or, or the fear and just go out there and talk to your fan base. Treat them the same way you want to be treated. You know what I'm saying? Be be very. You just talked about clarity. Be very mm-hmm. clear. This is what this is what we're doing. I, and at the end of it, he always I need your help. You know what I mean? He don't he don't just ask. He I don't say he beg, but he he makes it clear. I need your help. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so I, I think that you know that's an amazing blueprint. And I think the person that comes after him, like because Nipsey was before him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now you have the rest of the person that comes after him, man. I, I'm scared to see what that person does. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because he he yeah. he's setting a phenomenal example, and so and and I kind of you know hope to feel that way about myself. It's like I feel like as an executive, I'm setting an example, and I, I can't wait to see what comes next after me. You know what I mean? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> this is random, but like the Russell, I just it seems so like random or like it was written. The fact that like we look at Nipsey mm-hmm. Russell and we look at Russ, two of these dominant people in the indie yeah. space, and then you combine his name, right? Love Russ. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. <laughs> what? It seems crazy, right? It's just well, a, where, it's where just is a, Nipsey? A where, where is the what's what Russell part of Hel- Nipsey? Russell, Russell and Hustle. And we know oh, that he's, he's yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, see? <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh my God. Russell well, I, I can I can attest that that is his real name. I, that, oh, that, I expected yeah, it to be. Yeah, that's, that's his real I name. Said it was written. I didn't yeah. say he made it up and brought it together. I can, <laughs> yeah, I can see if he brought it together. I'm just saying the the coincidence of it to me is, is weird. By the yeah. way, is the is the I mean I'll probably, I could probably ask him this, but like is the L A is that is that it, it's it's La it's La I'm, so it's yeah. not L A it's not L A. Heard when we were talking to Iso Kenny the other day, he called him L A Russell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but I mean I people will make that mistake because that's yeah. what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like L A. Like, but because he's, he's, he's from he's from the Bay, so he's not he's from Vallejo. Okay, so yeah, so okay. Yeah, well, look. Well, one more thing to get in get into because yeah. we already kind of touched on the need to go D, D to C, right? Mm-hmm. Direct to consumer. And it was always there. It never left the idea of it, but social was working so great. It was hard to do anything else. Just like touring 
Yeah. Right? It was working so great. People didn't look at, at it uh, anything else until like pandemic. They pandemic, like, oh, they yeah, looked at other options. A little yeah. something else, right? Yeah. So how do you view direct to consumer um, for artists in their business right now? I mean, it's basically, you know, everything is going to be or has to be community driven. Like you have to have your own community because going on social media and, and trying to sell something, you know, we all know like your posts are only going to get shown to 10, 15 percent of your following. You know what I mean? So if, if I but if I had this community, I can pretty much guarantee 100 percent of them will receive it. That doesn't mean everybody will open it, but 100 percent of them will receive this text message. You know what I mean? And so just there's just a, a great difference in my my ability to sell. If only 10 percent of the people can see it versus 100 percent of the people, how much more am I going to sell if 100 percent can see it? Mm. So that's 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 why the community is there. But then it's also about training them and having them understand, like, I need support in this way. You know what I mean? You start with that scarcity. I, I'm selling 10. I'm selling 25. I'm selling 100. You just grow from there, you know. But you but you never want to you never want to um, eliminate the scarcity like ever. You know what yeah. I mean? You, you always want to keep that as a part of your model um, because you want to keep it personal. You want to keep it personal. And so. I think, you know, looking at somebody like uh, a Manny Wells who's building his community right now, like him being able to go on tour and whereas he wouldn't have been able to do 200 seats in every city because he couldn't afford to. 200 seats would have been um, 200 times 20 would have been $800. God, I hope that math is right. 200 times 20. 8,000. Thank you, bro. Is it? 4,000. I'm tripping. 200 times 20, 4,000, right? Yeah. Two, All right, yeah, so let's yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's run. It's four thousand. Boom, 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 boom. Four thousand dollars. <laughs> two hundred times twenty would have been four thousand dollars. Well, his his expenses would exceed that. Mm -hmm. To fly so five, having a band and all. Yeah, that to shit. fly yeah. five people and all that, his expenses would exceed that. But now that I'm able to offer these shows on offer base, which is some you know La Russell sort of pioneered, meaning there's only two hundred seats. I'm gonna put this out there. You make an offer. If a thousand people make an offer. Now I can go in and pick out the 200. I may pick some at the low end just to be nice and make sure the people who can't afford to pay high get in. I may pick some in the middle and I'll probably pick the rest of them at the top. <clears throat> so because I've sold this 200 seats offer base, I've made $17,000. Now I have plenty to come in and do my show. And now I can go see more cities because each city I'm making enough to cover the cost and make a profit. Mm -hmm. And so just because of these new thought processes and these new mindsets and way of attacking, you know, building that community is out there, you're able to really go out there and get in. So I, I think Manny Wells is going to be one of the leaders in that, in that standpoint, because he's going to be one of the first people to really show that process. Um, and, and I really mentioned him because it, his content is crazy. His mm -hmm. and, and so he, it, the way he's able to document and show you his processes is what's going to make him one of the biggest artists in the world. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> because you have a little Russell who set up these different ways of doing things, now somebody like Manny Wells can take advantage of it. But not only that, he's going to show it to you in a way you've never seen it before. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And so I, I'm, I'm OD excited about Manny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited to watch that for him too because. Yeah. Again, all the tools are the same, but you express them differently as a community. Yeah. So, now nah, it's going to be dope to see that. Um, you mentioned something. That was the last thing I wanted to say about that direct-to-consumer access. Oh, man. Boy, I, could, I wish I could remember. I don't remember How did I get 800 out of 2020, <laughs> bro? Golly, boy. Uh, What's crazy is I'm an A-plus student. <laughs> I graduated. I graduated and went to college at 16 years old. Oh man! And I just couldn't tell you 200 times 20. Hey. Mama, I'm sorry <laughs> if you watch this. I'm sorry, mommy. Oh man. Well, look. I guess I'll remember that question. I'm gonna have to shoot. Oh no, I remember what it was now. Okay. It was a text that I got. Uh -oh. Go ahead. I I brought up Mark Echo. Mm -hmm. and from own. from the clothing line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I was talking about how. He doesn't really get his flowers media wise. The mm. fact that he did um, Echo, you know, Unlimited. Echo, Echo Unlimited, he did a cut and sew, like a higher end brand, moved significantly into fashion space. And then Complex as a whole, right? Started Complex Magazine, mm. that entire media entity. Yeah. Was him. And he Didn't sold that. that off. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right? Like people don't like know his, his like his story. And 
he was talking about the guy uh, in the chat saying was like responding. Well, he's like a lot of it is probably because you look at these people like ah, Virgil. Um, who else is, is moving out there that you probably name? All the guys that are moving now. Uh, Virgil, Fear of Guy, I can't remember, Jerry oh, Lorenzo, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. right? Just these other guys now, he was like, well, their stuff is a little bit more exclusive, right? Mm -hmm. And Echo was so commercialized and everything, right? And I was like, well, if you look at it, Russell Simmons, Jay-Z, Sean Combs, well, apparently we can't call him Sean, you gotta call him like Diddy. Diddy, Love, you gotta call him <laughs> Love. Love. Right? And, yeah. and, and Echo, all these brands were actually proving out the culture, so they had to commercialize it and sell it at certain levels just to get you know certain investment, support, and things like that. And yeah. now we're moving on the ground today they created, where we can do these more selective brands, be more exclusive, like what you, you just said, right? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of this that artists are going to have to like get over is the selling aspect and more exclusive aspect of it because the benefit that they have today is the fans are actually ready for it. Yeah. This is the culture that's out there today. And there's already been people who have sold big numbers and I'm sure you're watching those people who the, the groundwork's been laid and they've hit these big numbers, but we can't, we're not going to be able to sell in that same way. We're going to have to do this exclusive approach to maintain that value over time or like people aren't even going to connect with it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I don't know about the Mark Echo story and, and him and then him like leading to where they can have the smaller brands. I don't know about that one. We might have something to disagree about there. <laughs> it wasn't just him, though. I said yeah. did it, all of them guys. They, yeah. I, I feel like they had to prove out the culture, specifically specifically in hip-hop. Right? Mm -hmm. If hip-hop never hit numbers, you already know they didn't want to hear from us anyway. They didn't want to help us so They didn't want to let us in. So yeah. we had to sell big numbers with, just for them to respect for it. Yeah, right, you know right. From, from the corporate side, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> first of all, I definitely used to wear Echo. I definitely remember that. Let's, let's start there. I definitely did. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I mean, the, the example threw me off. But right. I, I, think, I think that what you are saying about fear of God and off-white and all of those, um, and, and even go back to like a Supreme, like the exclusivity and the scarcity yes. is, is what made those um, successful. Mm -hmm. And maybe they primed us for where we are now. You know what I mean? Because fans are ready to support. You know what I mean? They're ready mm -hmm. to like be a part of what they b believe is cool financially. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're, they're ready to give up that monetary because they've seen, you know, these small things um, stay cool. Like Off-White yep. is still cool. Supreme right. is still cool. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I, think, I think those brands definitely help the culture in a way where it's like now we're ready to we're we're good and understand the process of being a part of something like this you know what i mean i agree yeah. i agree clear just to be clear i'm not saying echoes the godfather <laughs> out here he came from an era when people had to commercialize yeah so your era that you just alluded but to i don't came but I, see i just don't know about that they had to commercialize to, part to hit a certain level dapper dan no, no, to, my, to hit a certain like, level otherwise yeah. they were gonna be dapper dan and they yeah. didn't want that Back then, yeah, they didn't want Dapper Dan to really like like he got limited. He got yeah. he got shut out. He should have been way bigger, right? Based off of his talent and skill, you know what I mean. Yeah. That's what I felt. Yeah, I mean you you obviously much more than close than me, so I'm gonna take <laughs> your word for it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna take your word for it because uh, like I know who Dapper Dan is, and I know you know I knew about him before like the Gucci stuff. So yeah. I feel you, but I just. You know, I didn't even know the Mark Echo stuff, so I'm going to take your word for it, man. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, look, uh, w one way or another, man, appreciate you gracing the pod again. You are definitely yeah, someone sure. who represents no labels and someone who's left a label, right? Mm -hmm. And is definitely taking it seriously in terms of how to move this day in general. Um, yeah. And 
for those of y'all who are out there still listening at this point, the end of the pod, we appreciate y'all. Y'all are why we get to keep doing these because people who listen to the end, they help this thing get viewed. You get the watch time up. So keep watching to the end. If y'all got extra time in y'all life, you know, go ahead. Yeah. Just let that thing play. You know what I mean? You can even <laughs> walk out the room if you need to, you know, but we appreciate y'all. Yeah. This is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. Oh, and I'm J.R. McKee, man. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate Brad, man, Sean, (laughs) Ja'Cory. And we out.